So welcome to lesson seven of our elementary programming course. This is one week away from our final lesson. So let's get started. So first, let's do a quick review of what we learned last week. We learned how to make variables for one sprite only. Uh, that was part of our, uh, our review of the code that I presented to you uh, last week. We learned how to make our own blocks using the my blocks uh, tab and, uh, and how to define uh, a custom block that we can use uh, just like any block that Scratch has built in. And we also uh, looked briefly at how the characters can sense uh, colors in the stage and whether they can touch those colors. So just to review, here's how you can uh, make a new variable for one sprite only. So in the new variables button here, I'll make a variable. You enter the variable name and it makes a variable for the sprite only. And after you create the variable, you will see that uh, the variable, um, uh, when you see the variable on the stage, uh, it has a, a little label with the sprite's name on it. So this means uh, we know which variable, uh, which sprite the variable is uh, for. Sean, do you have a question? Well, I didn't finish it yet. Yeah. Uh, last week, we didn't actually uh, write any code ourselves. We just looked at our demonstration code and we're going to uh, review it briefly just today. So uh, don't worry. So that's how we make a variable. Uh, can anyone remind me how to make a custom block using the new blocks tab? I see Lyndon. Lyndon, do you have an answer? Uh, so you go to the my blocks thing, and then you press the make a block button. Here, and then what do you do? And then you type in what the you want the block to do, or what, yeah. And for example, uh, we have this, uh, this number or text input in the block, uh, uh, in the example block that I have here. So how do I uh, make this, uh, how do I make this number or text block appear? Like, uh, it's a block definition. Sean, do, do you have an answer? I accidentally deleted mine. Oh, no problem. No problem. Uh, we'll be showing uh, uh, the demonstration uh, the demonstration project again uh, right after this so that you can make another copy of it. So basically, uh, how you added input is using uh, these, two, uh, these two buttons here. So as you can see, one of the buttons as a number or text input, and the other uh, button as a Boolean input. So what Boolean means is basically either a yes or a no. So here you can add a number or text input or a yes or no input. So if you add a number or text input, it shows up like something like this. And uh, instead of number or text, you can name this input to be, for example, times. Click OK to create the block. You'll see that a define, uh, a define statement, a define block uh, automatically pops up. And the define block has your custom block uh, inside it. So what this block does is uh, it serves as a starting point for uh, 
or the script that you want to define this block as. So when you snap blocks into this defined block, you're telling the block what to do, for example. Um, oh, and when we added the number or text input and we uh, gave it the name times, it now shows up as a number or text block uh, in the definition that we can drag uh, anywhere in our def uh, anywhere into uh, the definition of this block uh, to tell the block what it should do with this input. So once we have the block definition, which tells the block what to do with uh, the input, we go to the My Blocks tab, and then we drag our custom block anywhere inside our script. And at the number or text block, uh, there's now a number or text slot that we can enter our input for this block. For example, if we enter the number five into the number or text input in this block, and we run the block, then what this does is uh, whenever uh, this custom block gets run, uh, Scratch uh, looks at your definition of the block, uh, what you told the block to do, and then it looks at the number five and Scratch says, uh, now I know that uh, times has the value five. So it goes down uh, into the block definition and it sees the move steps block and uh, the number of steps it's supposed to move is times. So since Scratch knows that times is now five, what this does is and move five steps. And that is what we see happens. So that's how we define a block. Uh, does that make sense? So, uh, Uh, can anyone, uh, uh, does anyone have an idea of uh, why we, uh, why uh, we, we should create our own blocks? So why should we use the my blocks uh, function in Scratch? Brendan? It's because uh, if Scratch doesn't have the block you want, you have to make it, you have to make your own. One. Yes, uh, that's a good answer. So, um, so in, in, in many places, you have to, you want your code to uh, run a certain set of instructions that Scratch doesn't have built in. And sometimes you want to run this set of instructions. You want to run the same set of instructions for several times, but in different places. So this is how uh, uh, the my blocks feature is, is useful. So uh, so for example, uh, uh, we can write a script like this. If I am hungry, then jump once. Otherwise, jump five times. But uh, Scratch doesn't have a built-in block called jump. And in order to make uh, the cat jump, you need to write uh, you need to write a script that tells it that tells it how to jump using the a combination of the move steps block. So uh, if you want to uh, make a jump repeatedly, but in different places. Uh, you could repeat the same uh, instructions for how to jump uh, many times, but you could also uh, create a new block and uh, 
move the instructions for how to jump into that block. And now all you have to do is um, I drag the I drag a custom jump block uh, into the, uh, the two different places where you want it to be used. And you don't have to uh, repeat the jump instructions. You don't have to copy and paste the jump instructions for uh, every time you want to use it. So that's one way uh, the my blocks feature in Stretch can be useful. You can create your own block when you need to repeat the same instructions, but in different places. And the my blocks uh, feature can also tidy up your code. So instead of having a one long stack of blocks, you can divide your block. Uh, you can uh, divide your code into uh, different portions that do different tasks. And that will make it much easier for a person to read. So this is a bit of what we went over. To make a custom block, you go to the pink My Blocks tab at the left side of the screen. You click on Make a Block, and you uh, use the Make a Block window to uh, add the parts of your block, including the name of the block, the inputs, and uh, text labels, which are basically an extension of the block name. And once you make the block, you're going to see a defined statement like this. So uh, as I have said earlier, uh, the defined block is where you put your definition of the block, which means uh, what you want the block to do. And last week, uh, there was a bit of confusion about how uh, we can create the, the variable inputs for the, for the block. So first, uh, when you're creating the block, you have the option to add the inputs. So you can add an input and give that input a name, for example, paces. And once you create the block, uh, so there, the input will show up as a number or text block, or, or a yes or no block if you chose this input. And the name of the input will be whatever name you gave it uh, when you created the block. And you can use this input uh, throughout your definition of the block, which are all the blocks attached to the defined statement. And that's how you uh, use it. So today we're going to uh, continue reviewing the code that we uh, didn't finish off last week. We're going to look at uh, how we build on someone else's code, how we make additions to someone else's code uh, as our main focus for today. So uh, this will need us to first have an understanding of how the code works before we can uh, make changes to it. We're going to look at how we can make custom backdrops. So, uh, Backdrops like this one are on. Uh, you can't find them uh, in the choose a backdrop uh, window because it's not a it's not a backdrop that Scratch has built in. So instead, if you want to customize your backdrops, you will need to either upload one using a picture on your computer or paint one. So next, we're going to look at how we can make a list. So a list, as I mentioned last week, is quite similar to a variable. The list has a name. And uh, the difference between the, a list and a variable is uh, the list can hold many values, while a variable can only hold one value at a time. So we're going to uh, have a look at how to use lists uh, while we review this code. And finally, 
we're going to look at how we can broadcast events to all sprites. So before we've looked at, uh, well, we've used many blocks in the events tab. And most of these blocks are, uh, are shaped like this. They tell the sprite to run a certain code whenever a certain event happens. And in this week, we're going to look at how we can broadcast events. So a quick review of the project that we, uh, that we had a look at last, last week. So this is what we started with. The cat can walk around the stage. The cat can jump. The cat can climb the walls, but the cat can't go through the walls. And when the cat touches, uh, when the cat touches this sprite, the cat goes to the next level. And the cat can climb obstacles, but the cat can't go through the obstacles. And uh, in the second level, uh, the target, the, the other sprite, has moved to another place. And finally, in the third level, the other sprite disappears. And we have this scene. So does anyone have any questions before we continue? Lyndon? Uh, are we going to re remix again? Yes. Uh, uh, if you already have uh, the remix project, you can use that. Otherwise, uh, but mine is wrong because it just shows way nearer, not where it's supposed to be. Oh. Uh, uh, if it's uh, not. Uh, what you'd expect it to be, uh, you can uh, make another copy of the project, which will be here. So I'm, I'm going to send the link in the chat again. So that's the link to the template. And you can uh, make a copy of that by clicking remix. I also have another question. Yes, go ahead. So what is the, uh, like the number or text uh, slot place and also, and then there's this star and then there's this another number or slot place. What is that? So is that in the make of lock window? No, I press the cancel button, go to operators and oh, then go down. Yeah. What so, is that one? Yeah, it's this block. So this means uh, multiply. So That's the star is just um, a version of the times sign. So for example, uh, three times three equals nine, two times three equals six, minus one times three equals minus three, right? Oh. So that's a times, and then that slash is the division? Yes. So 9 divided by 3 is 3. 10 what divided by 5 world? is 2. Wait, what is 10 divided by 3? It's 3.3333333 blah, 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 blah. Yeah. Okay. Uh, it's basically because there's always one missing out. So yeah, good. So does everyone have a copy of the product? Okay, good. So uh, let's go on to the project and 
So first, let, let's review uh, everything that we looked at last week. So first, we have a bunch of uh, in this script. Uh, we tell the sprite what to do when the print slave is first clipped. So this is called. Uh, we call this the initialization script, or the initialized script, because uh, it doesn't contain any any uh, repeat blocks. So this. So, so this whole script uh, runs only once when the uh, green flag is first pressed. So we have a bunch of variables here. Some of these are for the cat only. For example, velocity, a uh, velocity, which is how fast the cat is moving, and acceleration, which is how fast the cat is speeding up or slowing down in both the x and the y directions. And these blocks, as you can see here, they have the take player. So this means that they are for the player only. They are for this sprite only. We have the uh, can jump block, which tells this, uh, which tells us what, uh, whether the cat can jump so if the cat is already in the air, it cannot jump again. This is also uh, a variable that's for this sprite only, because when you uh, show it, you can see that uh, it has the tag player on it. And finally, we have level, which is the current level. And this is not a player. Uh, this is not a variable for this sprite only. The level variable is for all sprites because all the sprites need to use and see it. In contrast, the uh, the player, uh, the variables that are for this sprite only can only be seen and changed by this sprite. So in the initialization script. Uh, this stack over here. We initialize all the, the variables, which means we set all the variables to the values they should be uh, when the green flag is first pressed. We switch it to the right costume. We set the rotation style to left to, left to right so that uh, it doesn't turn upside down. And we make it go to uh, this place the bottom left corner of our screen and point right. Does anyone have any questions so far? All good? And then uh, in, another, in another script, we have a forever loop where we detect whether the player has, has pressed any keys. So if, it presses, if the player presses the right arrow key, it moves points in the right direction and sets the speed, sets the uh, left to right speed to five. If the left arrow key is pressed, it points left and sets the left to right speed to minus five, which means it's going left. If the variable can jump is a one, and the up arrow key is pressed. This means the sprite has jump. Uh, the sprite can jump, and the player wants it to jump. Then it jumps. And when it starts jumping, it says can jump to zero so that it doesn't uh, jump while it's still in the air. Next, we have this huge stack of blocks here, which essentially tells the sprite when to move. Uh, it makes the sprite sense whether it's hitting an obstacle. And if it's not hitting an obstacle, it tells the sprite when to fall down, when to stay uh, at the same place, when to move left, and when it's blocked by a wall. And in this stack of script, there are two places 
uh, where we use a custom block. So the custom block is called apply friction and we define it here. So when we look at the make a block window for this sprite, for this block, uh, we see that we first have the block name and then we have a number or text input called amount. So uh, the amount here shows up as a number or text block, and it represents how how much the sprite should uh, speed up or slow down. Sorry, uh, how much the sprite should slow down uh, in the left to right direction. And we define the block like this. I'm not going to uh, look at it in too much detail, but we do use it twice. So uh, that's pretty much all we covered last week. Today we're going to review some more of, we're going to review uh, whatever is left of, of the code we already have. And we're going to make the project look, look more like this. So add in the colors, add in the purple and red colors, basically. And if you can remember, the purple color makes the cat jump and the red color makes the cat go back to the bottom left corner. So oh, first, uh, we've covered four of these uh, scripts already, but the fifth one is something we haven't color covered. So the first block that we see in the script looks a bit weird. So let's go over this. So right here is where we use uh, the broadcasting feature that Scratch has. So this is in the events tab, the light yellow circle at the left side of the screen. And the last three blocks in the events tab have to do with this broadcasting feature. So these blocks are when I receive, broadcast, broadcast, and wait. So we're going to, we're mainly going to use the first two of these blocks uh, in this week today. So the, uh, broad, the broadcast block can be used to uh, broadcast a certain message to all of the sprites. So this block is used for that. So there are, uh, there are a number of, uh, of messages that you can broadcast. And uh, so here at this project, we see that we have one message called advance. So this is broadcasted by the, uh, by the target sprite, this sprite, whenever, uh, uh, the cat should be going to the next level. So to see how this broadcasting system works, we can uh, first add a new message. So this is, so after we click on uh, uh, the, the drop down menu on the broadcast block and click on new message, we see the new message window where you can um, give this message a name, for example, uh, meow. Like, okay, and now we have the meow message. How so, do you do that? So to repeat, oh, we, we first went to the yellow, uh, events tab at the left side of the screen. We scrolled down and we saw the when I receive block and the broadcast block. You can uh, click on the, uh, the drop down menu on either of these blocks. And when you click on the drop down menu, you're going to see the new message button. So uh, this button lets you create a new message. 
that you can broadcast to all the sprites. And we give this message a name. We'll click OK. And we're going to see uh, the new message. So when you click on uh, the broadcast block for our new message, it doesn't do anything. This is because uh, the cat is broadcasting this message, but uh, but no one's uh, are listening. No one's receiving this message. So um, so nothing is done. Or so if we want this uh, broadcast block to actually do something, we need to use it with the when I receive block, which is also in the events tab near the bottom. So, so when I receive block is a control flow block, like we discussed a few weeks ago. It has this shape, which is how, how we tell that uh, it is a control flow block. So like the other uh, blocks that have this shape, like the wing green flag click block, or the when key pressed block, or the or the when I start as a clone block, this block uh, tells the sprite to uh, run a certain script whenever it receives, uh, whenever a certain event happens. So in this case, the event is when the message that we set up here is broadcasted. So if we want this block to, for example, respond to the message meow, then we have to have the message meow selected. And like the other blocks, uh, like the other blocks with this shape, uh, we, we should attach uh, statements to the, uh, to the slot at the bottom of this block. Uh, which tells us uh, what the block should do when it receives uh, the meow, uh, the meow command. In this case, when meow is broadcasted, we want the sprite to, for example, start sound meow and say meow. So now we have the broadcast statement. We know the name of the message we want to broadcast. And we have uh, the when I receive block, which, um, which tells the sprite to listen to this message and do this whenever uh, it, it receives that message. So now, uh, if we click on broadcast mail, Well, uh, do whatever we told it to do here. So the key is whenever we uh, the broadcast statement is run, every uh, every one I receive block that has the same statement selected will be activated and will uh, fire off the code. So we can drag another one I receive block into the script and also make it meow. And this, this time I could do something else. For example, for example, uh, turn 15 degrees. And when we and when we run the block, broadcast meow. Oh, wait. This will work because we uh, made the uh, rotation mode left to right. Let's do move 10 steps. So 
So now, and now we see that when we click broadcast now, so when the broadcast now block is run, it fires off all the of when I receive blocks that have now selected. So I'll, whenever the block has now block as a run, both of these when I receive now blocks scripts are also run. And you can even uh, put the uh, when I receive now blocks in a different sprite. For example, if we go to the second sprite that we have here, the one that's called Pufferfish, we go back to the events tab and we drag another when I receive block into the script. So this is near the bottom of the events tab, the when I receive block. And we change the message to meow. When I receive meow, turn 50 degrees. And then we go back to the cat sprite, the player sprite. And then we click broadcast meow. So whenever this message is broadcasted, all the when I receive blocks that have this selected, even if it's in a different sprite, get run. And as we saw earlier, uh, whenever we broadcast the message, uh, if the pufferfish has a has this script, when I receive now, then turn fifteen degrees then the pufferfish will also turn 15 degrees when this message is broadcasted. So Sean, do you have a question? I'm still not done yet. Oh, uh, which part are you uh, stuck on? Uh, so yeah. Um, Yeah, I should give you a couple of minutes to catch up. So, uh, what I'm doing here isn't actually part of uh, uh, what the project will be. Uh, it's just uh, a demonstration of how the broadcast feature works. Okay. Well, what do we do now? All right, uh, is everyone caught up with the broadcasting? Uh, with the broadcasting feature? Yeah. Yeah. So let's have a look at how the broadcasting feature is used in our project. So uh, except for the new message that we just created, uh, this project also uses the advance, a message called advance. So uh, we look for where uh, where we have a broadcast advance block, and we find it in the pufferfish sprite. So uh, in one of the scripts here, there's a forever block. So uh, the fish uh, repeatedly senses uh, what, whether it's touching the player. And if it's touching the player, then it changes the level by one and it broadcasts advance. So this is uh, where it's 
that shows all the other sprites that are going to the next level. So now we look at, so now we look for the when I received advanced blocks. So there is one in the pufferfish itself. It says when I receive advanced, go to this place. And if level equals three, then hide. So this is how the pufferfish uh, responds to the advanced message. But the player also responds to the advanced message because we have the when I receive advanced block right here. So when the player receives this, that goes to the bottom left corner. It sets its speed and acceleration to zero. And it um, starts the sound crazy laugh, which is how the player knows uh, when the cat is going to the next level. And also in the stage, the stage also listens for the advance message. And the stage whenever the advanced message is broadcasted, the stage uh, switches the, back, the backdrop to whatever, to whatever level it is. Oh, yeah. That's how this project uses the, the broadcasting feature. So there's something else we mentioned uh, at the start of this lesson, and that is this. Uh, so the lists are also in the variable tabs. So, uh, so one thing that I've been telling you uh, throughout this throughout this course was that uh, all the blocks have the same color as the tab they belong to. For example, motion blocks are blue and the motion tab is blue. Looks blocks are purple and the looks tab is purple. Sound blocks are, are light purple and the sound tab is light, light purple and so on. But there's an exception. So in the variables tab, we have both uh, variables and lists. And variables are dark orange, just like the variables tab, but lists are red. So the lists are in the orange variable tab, but the list blocks are red. So this is something to be careful of uh, when we continue working with the lists. So now we're going to uh, create a new project. Uh, to uh, demonstrate how lists work. So this is our uh, default blank project. And at the left side of the screen, we have the variables tab. There's the my variable variable that Scratch has made for us. And there are no lists. So, uh, we don't see any red blocks in the variables tab, but there is a make a list button. So this is the orange variables tab near the bottom, the make a list button. And when you click on the make a list button, uh, there's a window that says new list. So this uh, window uh, looks almost exactly like our uh, new variable window. We can make, or we can give an, a name for the list. The list can be for all sprites or for this sprite only, like we saw with the variables. And now we're making a list instead of a variable. So for anyone who's not caught up yet, this is in the variables tab of the new project. Click on the make a list button. Here. Type in a name for the list. For example, my list. Method for all sprites. Click OK. So now you see all these red blocks, the red list blocks in the variables tab that are right under 
the minus block. There is a check mark next to the minus block. Just like there's a check mark next to, to the variables, which tells uh, Scratch whether to display this, uh, this, the value of this number or text, sorry. It tells Scratch whether to display the value of this list on the stage. So when we create the stage, we see the new my stage uh, block. If the check mark next to it is pressed, we also see the list on the stage. John, do you have a question? Is it a new project? Yeah, we're going to create a new uh, project so that we can uh, demonstrate how to use uh, this. I think I know how to. Good. What are we going to do? After we look at how to make lists, so we're going to uh, add the colors in our project. But first, uh, a brief look at how to make lists. So does this one have the... I already know how to make lists. Oh, good for you. It's um, a list. And you need to actually, like, if you press it, it's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, or how many you press, how many they have. Right. So, uh... Now we have the empty list in our stage. So this is the list that we just made and it's currently empty because it says empty here. And if we click on the my list a block, it also gives us empty. So now we know that the list is empty. How do we add something to the list? Well, there are a couple of ways. So first, uh, if we look at uh, the list on the stage, there's this pop-up, uh, there's this uh, floating window on the stage. It has my list, which is the name of your list as the title. And at the bottom, uh, there are two buttons. The plus button adds a new uh, element to the list. And the equal sign button lets you resize the list window. So after you press the plus button a certain number of times, you will get um, a few values in the list. So these values are slots that you can put in a number or text. For example, let's type one. Two, three, and we see that each of these uh, values has a number next to it. And we can trace around these variables. Oh, actually, we cannot. So each of these values is represented by a, a position in the list. So the position is uh, what these numbers represent. The word one is in position one. The word two is in position two. The word three is in position three and the, and the word four is in position four. We can delete, uh, delete one of the elements and we can add new elements. So uh, even though we have the values one, three, four, two in the uh, list, the list is sorted by the position of each element in the list. So the uh, so each value in the list is identified by its position in the list. Dylan, do you have a question? 
Oh, uh, that's because you made uh, the oh. list for this sprite only. Uh, if oh. you make the list for all sprites, uh, it will show up as my list. But uh, that's fine. Uh, it's fine if you have um, the, the list for this sprite only. So I'll wait uh, one minute for everyone to catch up with this. And then we'll continue looking at how we can uh, how we can uh, make the how we can make the sprite access um, elements in the list. Sean, do you have a question? Uh, what are we going to make? Like what game? Like yeah. Yeah, I think it's. Uh, we're going to continue the game that we're uh, that I showed you last week. So. Uh, the so version you have looks like this, but the final version would look like this. Oh, you mean that other cat version? Yeah, uh, this is only a, like a demonstration project that we're, uh, we're making to uh, like learn how to uh, learn how this works basically. So now, uh, now that we have the list, uh, we can have another look at the, the list blocks in the variables tab. So we have all these blocks, which tell us, so the first five of these blocks are statements, which tell the scratch to, uh, to add something to the end of the list, to delete, uh, the value at a certain position of the list. You delete everything in the list and make it an empty list to, uh, to insert a value into the list so that it is at a certain position or to replace uh, the element of the list at that position with something with another value. And then we have the uh, the number or text blocks, which access uh, elements in the list. And these are the ones that we're going to be uh, focusing on for this project. So the only one here that we're going to be actually using is the item number of my list. So this gives us the, the item at this position of the list. For example, if we want to uh, see what item one of my list is, we run this block and that gives us one. And we can see that the element at position one of the list is the word one. Actually, I'm going to make this a bit less confusing and call it cats dogs, elephants, penguins. So now um, the, the element at position one of, the, of my list is cats. The element at position two of my list is dogs, which we can see here. The element at position three of my list is elephants. And the element at position four of my list is called penguins. And there are a few other blocks. For example, item number of thing on my list. For example, if we want to know what position dogs is on my list, that gives us two because the element dogs is at position two. Links of my list 
this is another block here, which tells us how many how many elements are in my list. And it's, it gives us four because there are four elements here. And finally, we have the show list and hide list blocks. These are statements that tell the sprite to either show it on the stage or hide it on the stage. Does anyone have any questions so far? No. Good. So let's return to our, our, our cat platformer project, the jumping cats one. And uh, we're going to add the new colors. So we won't finish adding the colors for today, but uh, we're going to uh, start by adding the red color. So if you saw the demonstration project, uh, the purple color makes the cat bounce, and the red color makes the cat go, go back to the bottom left corner. So, uh, this seems so hard. Yeah, it is. Uh, so first, can anyone tell me how can we add the red color on the stage? Uh, go to uh, press the add sprites and then and then find the one that says line. Oh, that's and a very then, good idea. Yeah. Just type line, I guess. Yeah, so there is actually a sprite in Scratch called line, which is this red line here. We don't actually need uh, a new an extra sprite for uh, with a red color effect. Uh, we only need to make a change to our backdrop. So, uh, so after we have uh, many obstacles in our stage, like we have here, <laughs> uh, it will be much easier to just draw rectangles on the stage than to have a separate uh, have a separate sprite for, for every obstacle. So that kind first, of makes sense. Yeah, good. So first we're going to look at how we can draw things on the stage. So uh, to do this, click on the stage, click on the backdrops tab at the top left corner. And we're going to see three backdrops. The first backdrop is the, uh, the blank stage with the black rectangle so that the cat cannot go past the walls. The second backdrop is the one with the obstacles. And the third backdrop is the U win. So uh, there are a few ways that you can uh, add things to the backdrop without adding another sprite. So when you uh, click on a backdrop number one of the backdrops, there are a few tools that, that you're going to see at the, a few buttons that you're going to see at the left side of the screen. And then there's going to be something like a canvas that you can draw on. First, let's select the paintbrush tool. And let's try this out by uh, clicking and dragging our mouse inside the canvas. So the paintbrush, as you can see, draws lines. Or uh, it makes us draw on the stage. So that's one way we can change the background. I think I know what to do. 
So we press the fill and then turn it to red and press the outline and turn it to red too. And then press the bottom like the square thing. And then it turns out to be squares. Yeah, good. So, uh, so first, uh, we don't want this mess that we just created. So we can use the undo button at the top of the screen. The one that looks like a left, an arrow pointing left. I found that a few times and then uh, all of our drawings will just, that we just made will disappear. So first, let's look at the left side of the screen on the fill, in the fill box. So this gives us what color we want for the paintbrush. We have three sliders, one is one says colors, one says saturation, one says brightness. So uh, using, uh, using all of these uh, sliders will, will make us able to select a precise color that we want to use. So the color is uh, whatever color of the rainbow that we want it to be. The saturation is uh, how much to blend from white to the color. And the brightness is how much to blend from black to the color. So let's drag the color to the far left side so that, that the color is just zero. Drag the saturation slider to the far right so that the saturation says 100. And the brightness should also say 100. So color zero, saturation 100, brightness 100 will give us the red color. And, and now we have the red paintbrush and we can paint anywhere in our, uh, in our scene to, to make something red. And finally, uh, we want the cat to uh, respond when it's to set this, uh, when it's touching the red color. So let's click on the player sprite at the uh, in the sprites panel at the left side. First, um, let's go to the events tab. Find the when green flag cleft block, go to the control tab, find the forever block. We have this. And now we drag the if then block into the forever block so that it now looks like this. And we go to the sensing tab to find a, the touching color block. So this is the blue sensing tab and we are looking for the touching color block. And it's the second one. Yeah, it's the second one from the top. And now, uh, after we've dragged this block into our script, we click on the color. And now we can change the color to uh, the red color. Again, we drag the color slider to the far left side so that the color says zero, saturation says 100, and brightness says 100. So now we have the color red. And we go to the blue motion tab again. We drag the go to X, Y block into the if then statement. And it will go to X minus 200, Y minus 150, let's say. So here's our, Here's a new 
here's our new script. So when green flag is clicked forever, if touching the red color, then go to the bottom left corner. So now the cat is sensing the stage and it's um, and it's performing actions based on uh, the colors that it detects on the stage. And next class, we're going to see that it doesn't only detect colors in the stage, it also detects colors from other sprites as well. But uh, For now, uh, this is everything that we're going to color, uh, cover this week. Next week, we're going to uh, uh, draw the colors in the other stages, uh, in the other backdrops. And we're going to uh, make the confetti at the, uh, at the uh, very last stage. So we're going to take one question from Yilin. For the first thing you need, why yeah. does it have to be zero? Why can't it be 100? You mean for the color, saturation, and brightness? Yeah, yeah, the yeah. color. Yeah, actually, a color, the color zero and 100 are the same. So, uh, Color zero is exactly equal to, it's exactly the same as color 100. They're both exactly the same color. So we could choose 100. Yeah, we can choose 100 as well. And that will still be sensed by the cat. So uh, so color zero is equal to color 100. Does anyone have any other questions? So if not, then uh, that's all we're going to cover for today. So I'm going to put the link to our project in the chat. So this is uh, where we managed to get to this week. Next week, we're going to make uh, things even more fun by putting in the, oh, uh, the, the oh, bouncy oh, colors oh, and the extra stages, the extra levels, <laughs> and also the sounds. Oh, but for now, uh, Thank you for coming and uh, see you next week. Bye.